Hi, this is Ariella Vaccarino. Welcome to my fifth podcast. I'm the creator of Voice Lessons to Go. I'm excited about this podcast. It is about confidence and singing, and it's a little deeper than just confidence. It's how to handle a situation when you're not exactly confident on your own. And this is a tactic that I use that kind of sounds crazy, but it really worked for me. And I want to tell you the story about it. Many years ago, I had to do an audition. And I can't remember what the audition was for, but I do remember the aria that I had to prepare to sing. It was Sul Fidun Sofio e Tesio. It was from the opera Falstaff by the composer Verdi. Now, I was not prepared to do this aria. I didn't put the due diligence in learning the aria. And I didn't really realize until the last minute. Usually I learn things very quickly. I did learn the aria and I sang it fine when I was singing alone at the piano. But when I tried to get with a pianist to work with me, I realized there was some major counting that had to happen. That happens sometimes when you practice with the accompaniment. Things feel very different. This particular piece was a real challenge for me. So I remember I had to do the audition on a Tuesday. I was not prepared, and I had to do the audition anyway, and it was Monday. And Monday night, many years ago, I used to go every Monday night to this performance class for other opera singers. And it would be somewhere between four to ten of us who would show up Monday night at this wonderful teacher's house, and we would all sing for each other. So it would be like two and a half hours long, and we would all give each other advice, and it would be a great way to stand up and practice singing. And just as a little caveat, I want you to think about getting something like that in your life if you are a singer Finding a way to sing regularly in front of people is a wonderful way to push out nerves and really get to practice the art of performance before you actually have to perform for real. So this was Monday night, and we were at the class, and I got up and I performed this piece, and it was really horrible. <laughs> and I remember the teacher kept stopping me, and I kept trying to count, and I was counting, and it was awkward. I got through it, but there was just nothing great about it. I had the audition the next day, and I was like sick to my stomach over it. I didn't know how I was going to be good by the next day. Later on in the evening, another girl got up and sang, and I had never seen her before, and it turns out she sang the same aria but she sang it perfectly. She had the most beautiful line and she wasn't at all freaked out about the accompaniment. She didn't look like she was counting and it was just this gorgeous, luscious line over this piano and it was beautiful. And it really stuck in my head. I couldn't believe how effortlessly she sang it, especially compared to how horribly I had just sung it. So the next day I went to my audition. I was still sick over it. I didn't know it. There was nothing natural about me singing this aria. And just before I went in to do the audition, just before they called me, I made this odd decision to pretend that I was this other woman who I had just seen perform the night before, performing this aria for the judges. And it wasn't me, because I didn't know it, but I was going to pretend to be her. I did have a lot of years of acting experience. It was part of my background. It happens with opera singers. We've got to act and sing. It's kind of crazy. And I found it to be a bit of a challenge. It was also kind of the only way I could handle going and doing this audition that I knew was going to be so horrible as myself. So I made this crazy decision, and I walked in. And I was myself when I introduced myself, and then I bowed my head for a moment, and I came up to do this aria, and I pretended I was the girl from the night before. And I sang this aria so well. And the whole time I was singing it, I was just picturing her singing it the night before, so effortless and beautiful. And I followed and copied her line. I was mimicking her. I was not being myself. And I didn't even count. I just sang it like I was watching her. And I did really well at the audition. But I do remember it was a huge impact on my mind. I never thought to pretend to be somebody else beyond just pretending to be a character, but to pretend to be somebody who knew the part when I didn't know the part and having success with it. I just wanted to share that. You know, people write me all the time asking me questions about singing and singing advice and tips. And a lot of times people are asking me, how do you get up on stage and not have a shaky voice or not have nerves? And how do you get the nerves out? And of course, I always give the advice that the more you perform, the better you're going to be. So try and find an outlet to perform because it's not just about working the voice, but you also have to practice performing. But I wanted to share with you the thought that maybe if you could put in your head a performance of the same piece that you're about to do, of something that you saw that really blew you away, and try and get in touch with that. Be that person for a moment. You know, be the person who sang that pop song that you love. Be the one on the radio when you go out and sing it. Pretend that you have that audience, that background. Pretend that you have the confidence to get the part. Eventually, confidence grows. You fake your confidence, and then you become confident. And that's a blurry line. People can't always tell if you're faking it or if you are just being it. And the better actor you are, the harder it is for them to tell if you are confident or not. 
So it's kind of a strange little story, but I wanted to share that with you because it really stuck with me in my head. And just for anything, I mean, even if you're going for a job interview, you're doing an audition or you have a performance, imagine that you already have it or imagine that you're someone who already does it and just sing for people. And that's what I did that one time. So I'd love to hear your voices. I do vocal assessments. You can get that service from my site, voicelessons2go.com. Um, I've got a YouTube channel with instructional videos, and I'm growing on Facebook. So come and like us there. I'm giving free giveaways all the time there. Thank you. Take care and sing well.